Now we go to a different, another option to optimize. We have a choice. We have a choice of, to use a solid bar or a hollow tube. You want to pull, hit that pull down, Jen? Free hint, free hint for the students right off the bat. One of these choices is better in compression. One of these choices is better in tension. With the, uh, the hollow tubes are better in compression. You actually have more section with the hollow tube, right? And that, what do we talk about? You want more section with the hollow tube. You don't want long, skinny compression members, right? So let's go in and let's identify all of our compression members by clicking on the top and drop down to the bottom one. That'd be number 25 and up. We selected them all. So let's change them all to hollow tubes. Watch, watch what happens to the cost as we do it. And run the load test. We have a failure. So here's that it, part of the iterative process, right? What do we have to do? We've got to go back and resize them. So Jen, you've got your work cut out for you. You need to take those compression members and make them bigger, right? And they range from 3.3 to 1.5. Were we working on this, we could choose them all at once and make them all bigger and then go back and work them all right back to 0.99 and then you'd call me and we'd all be rich, right? No. What we'll do is work them one at a time. We'll go back up to the top one. If, if you have more force on the member than it's capable of, that performance ratio will be greater than 1. It'll be 0.99. It'll be one point something. If it's more greater than one, then you can make it smaller. If it's less than 0.99, anywhere less, say it's 0.33, you know you, you, you can make it a lot smaller. So you're looking at comparing that ratio. That's a ratio of force on that member divided by its capacity. So you're looking at 0.99 to be perfect. Anything less, you need smaller members. Anything greater, you need larger members. Jen, you got us a design that works yet? Just select them all. Select all your tension or compression members. Resize them all. Resize them all to 180. Should have about three failures. Go back to the drawing board. Fix your tension failure. Make it bigger. Okay, we're, we're doing pretty good now, right? We've, we've saved almost 40, we're coming up on $40,000 in savings. And we haven't done all the members because we're using our imagination here, right? So now we have all of our compression members as tubes. Let's use our imagination. We've, we've resized them all, okay? We've resized them all. We have all of our tension members, perfect performance ratios, and we have all our reversals. Those reversals, though, they're, they're bothering me a little bit. We know we want the compression members to be hollow tubes. We suppose that we want the tension members to be solid bars. What do we do with those reversal members? They have both. They're compression and tension. The simplest way is to let the software help us, right? So find us one, Jen. Find us a reversal member. There's one. This one is 0 0.09 on the compression side and 0.16 on the tension side. For the design iteration process, the 0.16 is the larger number or the controlling stresses on the structure, right? So we'll treat it like a tension member. So that particular member is a tension member. It acts like a tension member. We should make it a, hollow, we should make it a solid bar. So run the load test and resize it. She's making it smaller because we ended up with a very small performance ratio. Okay, so we've, we've seen two different techniques so far. We can size the members to get efficiency, and we can choose a geometric shape to get efficiency, right? Now let's go back to our imagination and let's suppose that we've done all of this on all of these members. We have everything 
everything chosen properly is tube or solid bar. We have all of our performance ratios exactly perfect. Next, we have another option. We have three different materials that we can use. Now, you'll notice that I gave you the compressive is, or the hollow tubes are better for compressive members, and that was a free tip for the day. I think, you know, expert high school physics kids and math whizzes and middle school geniuses, I think it would take them about 20 minutes to determine which one of these materials would be better for tension members and which one for compression members. So for our demonstration today, we're going to choose high strength, low alloy steel for the tension members. So once again, how do we, des how do we determine the tension members? We go to our chart, our load test result chart, and we locate the tension members. We'll select them. Start with member number eight, Jen. Select all of those. And we go over to our pull down and choose high strength, low alloy steel. And once we do that, we can run our load test. And we knew it was going to pass, right? Did anybody doubt that it was going to pass? It had to, right? We used stronger material. It had to pass. But it may not be as efficient as we'd like. So we'll go back and we'll look at those performance ratios again. Look at member 15. It's down to 0.62. So back to the question we had before, what do we do? It's 0.62. Do we make it bigger or do we make it larger? We can reduce the size of that member. We don't need as much section because we have a stronger material. So Jen, make that member smaller. You're getting there. Went too far. There's the iterative process bearing itself out. With just the techniques that we've looked at in the last 45 minutes or so, just those techniques, you can be competitive.